Hey guys, and welcome to my new Flooded Valley guide that uses the most overpowered strategy, also known as Pat Overclock, and you can't convince me otherwise. Anyways, let's get started by placing a sub right over here. I don't really have any good visual indicators for it, but you can just see the placement pretty accurately. And I accidentally placed my sub so well that I didn't actually have to place another sub to beat this round. But in most cases, you'll have to place a second sub mid-round right up here. If a blue makes it through and goes up, you probably can't win. But once you've placed both subs, you can just AFK until the end of round 10, because we don't have to do anything. After round 10, place Pat right over here, as bottom left as possible. Yes, you can technically place Pat in the middle of round 10, but it doesn't really matter, so there's no real purpose to it. And just keep him on first. That's pretty important. After round 12, upgrade your bottom sub to twin guns. So for round 15, once your money reaches about 640 or 650, around there, use Pat's ability, and this should just carry you through the rest of the round, and you should beat it with no issues. And then after round 16, upgrade your bottom sub to airburst darts. And then also just get intel on it, because that's pretty important. So, before round 22, place a boat right over here as bottom left as possible above Pat. This guy will end up becoming our carrier flagship later, and just helps a lot. And then for 24, upgrade your bottom sub to submerge and support, and submerge it for the camo, and then just unsubmerge it after. Whenever you can afford it, upgrade your boat to both grape shot and hot shot. It's very important to do this, as we don't really have any reliable lead popping for 28, except Pat, but he doesn't really count. His attacks are too slow to really make it super consistent. And then, for some RNG prevention, I like to use Pat Roar on 28, just to make everything a bit less... or a bit safer, not a bit less safe. What am I saying? I cannot English today. Well, I can't really English any day, but today's even worse. And then for 31, I'd recommend using another Pat Roar off cooldown. Usually this isn't needed, but there are some cases where you will have to use it. It doesn't happen too often, but it's just nice to use. For 33, you want to submerge your bottom sub and upgrade it to Bluntonium Reactor as soon as you have the money. Just as soon as you have the money. Just spam the button. And once you've gotten it, the rest of this early game is completely free. There's only like a few buttons you have to press. I think six total. Maybe. Whenever you can afford it, upgrade your boat to a 220 double shot with hot shot. Next, we'll get this guy to Destroyer in the middle of round 37, when we can afford it. Before we can afford Destroyer on 37, I like to just use a Pat Roar to clear things up a bit faster and to prevent any maybe possible RNG. I'm not sure if it's entirely possible, but it theoretically could be, and I kinda want to avoid that. And, yeah. 38 and 39 get absolutely wrecked by Destroyer, which is kind of nice. For 40, you just want to use a Roar whenever the Moab, like, gets close to your Destroyer. If you want to really make this, like, 100% sealed, you can unsubmerge your sub for the Moab layer and then submerge it back afterward, once the Moab layer is popped. For 43, we just want to use a Pat Roar whenever we see ceramics, or just at any point, 
early in the round. And then you'll get Aircraft Carrier, or as I like to call it, and as I will be referring to it for the rest of this, RNG Trash. Because, as the name implies, the strategy can have a bit of RNG in the next few rounds until we afford Carrier Flagship. And it is all because of Aircraft Carrier and because plain RNG is kinda bad. If you want to be like 100% safe, you can use a Pat Roar on the Moab that comes up on round 50, but you shouldn't have to do that. Most cases you won't have to, only if you get really bad plain RNG will you have to do that, so don't bother most of the time. But on 52, it is 100% required to use it once you see the first Moab coming up from the bottom side. The top side Moabs are pretty easy, it's just the ones that come from the bottom that are a bit scary, because there's very little time to deal with them. 53 could have some RNG, but I've never encountered it, but I bet someone in the comments is going to complain about it. Just watch. Anyways, the Moabs on 53 shouldn't be a problem in 99% of cases. So, yeah. And then for 54, you want to use a Pat Roar the instant you see a Moab come up from the bottom side. This is because you want to have it back for the last ceramic wave of 55, which is pretty crucial for this run. And as I just said, make sure to use a Pat Roar off cooldown on the fourth wave of ceramics. The first three shouldn't be any issues. It kind of might be a little bit of RNG, possibly, probably not. So yeah, be on the lookout for that, but it probably won't happen. And then, in the middle of 56, you should be able to afford the newly price-buffed Carrier Flagship. And now, the run becomes a lot easier. Well, not really, but kind of. We can say that. And now, over the next few rounds, place an Ice Monkey as bottom right as possible on the top platform, and upgrade it to a 042 Snowstorm with Refreeze. This guy is important for actually being able to place land towers, and just a neat ability that we'll have, and is pretty important for the rest of the run. You should finish upgrading it in the middle of 61. And then, just at some point before 63, place a village right above your Bluntonium Reactor. This village will be very important, as will, it will act as a very nice discount later on, and a primary training, but we're not going to be getting those just yet. Right now it's just the 000. But for 63, you actually do have to use some abilities, which is kind of annoying, but come on, what do you expect? you got to use a snowstorm on the first wave, and then once your snowstorm cooldown reaches about 50%, the second wave should come out, and you should use a Pat Roar. And then for the third wave, just use another Snowstorm. It's that easy. And then, now we'll get our village to a 202 Jungle Drums with Monkey Commerce, or the discount upgrades. And now, we'll start building into the most important tower of this run, the Bloon Solver. Just place it on this platform, and just upgrade it straight to a 400 Bloon Liquifier, or Dissolver, whatever it's called. I forget which upgrade's which. You should be able to afford the tier 4 in the middle of round 70, and now we'll actually start saving up for the tier 5, the, the one that actually matters this run. Oh, 
because Carrier Flagship is weak, um, 75 can be a little bit of an issue. It's not really, like, prone to too much RNG or difficult. It's just, if the bottom Moabs from the first clumped BFBs overwhelm you, you want to use a Pat Roar. But if they don't, just use it on the second set, and that should carry over to 76, where you probably just want to use a Snowstorm. I don't, but it ends up getting a tiny bit close, and you might not want that. 77 always seems to get a bit close, but I've never actually died to it, so you should be fine. But if you really feel scared, I guess you can use a snowstorm or something. Shouldn't be needed, but yeah. Like there, it got pretty scary. For 78, you want to use a pat roar and a snowstorm, just in combination, on the first wave to make it as easy as possible. I'm not even t entirely sure if the snowstorm's needed, I kind of just got a bit scared, but I'd recommend you use it. And then for the second wave, you kind of have to anticipate a little bit when it comes out, so you just want to use a pat roar a few seconds before it comes out, or just directly when it comes out. You don't really actually have to anticipate it, but you can if you want to. Use it when you see it, and snowstorm. And the top part should just get beaten when they show up. And then, for 79, you should be able to finally afford the balloon solver. So, get that. And then upgrade it to a 520, and get your village to a primary training. This will give it a bit more pierce and a bit more range. I guess it helps a bit. Might not be needed, though. And then after that... We're going to get a 401 Alchemist right over here. S make sure that the only thing in its range is the Balloon Solver, because that's the only thing we want it buffing. If it's buffing anything else, that's kind of bad. So yeah, just get 401. And now we're going to start getting the actual goat of the run, the Overclock. So yeah. Just place an Engineer right over here, and start upgrading it to a 040 Overclock. And if you feel like it, you can put the foam up here, but I'm not entirely sure if it's needed. It just makes it a bit more safe on the DDTs. DDTs are really the biggest problem of the run, so, yeah. And in the middle of 84, you should be able to afford the Overclock, and if you want to, you can just keep Pat overclocked for the rest of the run. And also make sure to upgrade your top sub all the way from the early game to a 301 submergent support. It kind of helps, I guess. And the reason why we want Pat overclocked is not for his damage, but actually for his stuns. This basically keeps all Moabs on the bottom side just completely in place and gives us a ton of time to deal with them. Because DDTs are probably the biggest problem of the entire run, we want to get a Sabotage Ninja just right over here, under the range of the discount. That's all that really matters, as long as it's just there. You can also use a Pat Roar if anything gets a bit scary and you'd like to. You should be able to afford Sabotage in the middle of 88, and I just use it on every single DDT round, but if Pat is overclocked, I don't even think you need it for 90, or for just 90, or 93. 95, maybe, and 99, definitely. And now, we'll start building our top side stallers, which are just three 204 Moab presses set to strong. These guys will mostly target the top side, as that's where the ZOMGs are further along the track. So, as I said earlier, I use a Sabotage here, and on 93, with those two, I don't think it's needed as long as Pat is overclocked. Solver just absolutely destroys these rounds because Carrier Flagship does a great job at breaking open the layers, but it just can't handle the ceramics, which Solver pairs pretty well with. And you should be able to get your second mob press in the middle of 92.
and on 93 I do the sabotage. Probably not needed, but yeah, as long as Pat's overclocked, you should be fine. And you should be able to get your second mode press, or your third mode press actually, in the middle of 94. And now, that's all we're spending on main defenses, and the rest is just going to be on bad damage. So, yeah. 94 gets absolutely shredded, which is kind of nice actually. For 95, I'd recommend overclocking Pat just at some point before the DDTs come out. It's very important that he's overclocked whenever any DDTs are out, so yeah. And then, you can also use a Sabotage here. It helps, but I'm not entirely sure if it's needed. Solver can handle them pretty well, especially in combination with Pat's stuns. And now, for 97, I'd recommend placing a first strike right over here and using the ability on the top of the OMG. It's mostly just here to speed up time, as it's only really needed for 100, but it'll just speed up 97 quite a bit. Not entirely needed, but saves quite a lot of time. And you don't actually want to overclock Pat on 97, and you want to keep the overclock up for 98. Or it doesn't really matter because it still has a harp percent up time, but yeah. Just keep Pat overclocked for the start of 98, and whenever you see things just start to more crowd toward the middle, or just when the top of the UMGs start turning down, you want to use the Pat Roar, and most of the round just gets absolutely erased. Never seen a round 98 so clean in my life. Actually, yes I have. What am I talking about? Anyways, before round 99, place a spike factory right over here and upgrade it to a 140 spike storm. It's ideal if it's in range of the track, but it doesn't have to be. And then give it a 320 alchemist just to make it better. And make sure Pat is overclocked for the DDTs. And this time, the Sabo is 100% required, so use it. Don't use a Pat Roar, though. And then for 100... Once the bad starts to turn right, you want to use a Pat Roar and a Spike Storm in combination. This will deal a lot of damage to the bad, and we can just finish it off with a first strike once the bad turns down. And if you've done everything correctly, and it is a lot, so good job, you should now have your Flooded Valley Black Border with the most base strategy of all time, Pat plus Overclock. I hope this guide helped you out in some way. Have a nice rest of your day, and goodbye.